Welcome to the Michigan Golfer Show. Join us each week as we explore the people, the places, and the events that shape our great game. Hi, I'm Jack Berry, and I'm very pleased that today we have with us Steve Brady, who is now the head golf professional at the Oakland Hills Country Club, a member of the Michigan Golf Hall of Fame, and a guy that I've known since he had a Brady Bunch following him over in Saginaw. Hi, Steve. Hi, Jack. How are you doing? <laughs> Good. Hey, you know what? You've been, we've known each other for a long time, right? Yes. Uh, probably 1984. Yes back when I qualified for a few nice tournaments and you always gave me the benefit of the doubt even though I didn't deserve it so I wanted to say thanks for all you've done for me. Uh, uh, Steve has won, he's won everything there is to win in Michigan and he's played in a lot of the national tournaments and uh, back in those days there was the television show The Brady Bunch and so all of uh, Steve's uh, family and his, and his friends and everything had t-shirts with the, the Brady Bunch on it and followed them around the golf course. Yep. You know, it, it's funny, at the Buick Open, that, that first year that we played, the first round I played well, and uh, the second day, my father-in-law said, all right, every birdie that Steve makes, we're going to buy a beer at the beer tent. <laughs> and I birdied number 10, made a par, and they five in a row. Birdies. So I think I had half the gallery a little bit staggered, drinking a lot of beer out there. But that was that was a great time in my life, and uh, I'm fortunate to have been there. <laughs> now that, that that the beer sales went way up that time, and with, was that the time when they were still selling them in the cans? Oh yeah, yeah. It was you know this was 1984, right? Yeah. So you didn't have uh, all the ecology issues, and it was anything goes. So it was it was a lot of fun in that. That year was a big year for me because I was able to play well. I met my wife for the first time, uh, and I have a lot of great memories. And it, and it got me uh, maybe a little bit of exposure on the Michigan uh, scene in golf, and maybe on more of a national level too. So I was I was excited that year, and I'm uh, you know now it's you know what 30 years later, and uh, I'm still playing golf. So so everything's good. Well, you started out with uh, Tom Stewart, didn't you? Bay Valley. Oh yeah. <laughs> I played golf at Saginaw Valley State, and Bay Valley was our home course. Right. And uh, we, we had access to the course, we had access to, to the range, I worked the range, did everything there. My wife Judy ran the beer cart, and that's where I met her. So she was taking classes at Ferris State, and uh, we met. One thing led to another, three kids later, here we are at Oakland Hills Country Club. So. Uh, we're looking forward to the U.S. Amateur Championship in August. Well, you've been you've been at a few other clubs, and now when did you get to Oakland Hills? Well, I worked at Bay Valley Golf Club for six years, played the tour for a number of years. The business plan wasn't the best because I was spending more money than I was making. So, uh, kids came along. I worked a year at Gross Eel Country Club, played the Ben Hogan Tour the first year that it it came out. Uh, then I went to Detroit Golf Club, worked for six years for John Traub. And then after the 96 U.S. Open at Oakland Hills, Pat Croswell and I uh, spoke that winter, and he says, what do you think about coming to Oakland Hills? And I didn't know anybody at Oakland Hills. And uh, I've been there 19 years as the, the teaching guy, director of instruction. This past year, Pat retired after 30 years as the head pro. Uh, and the membership decided they wanted me to be the head pro, and I, I'm uh, extremely happy about it. Well, you followed uh, some pretty good people uh, like uh, Al Watrous and uh, Mike Suchak and, and uh, uh, Al Mengert. Yep. <laughs> so. No, the, the list of head professionals there is, is uh, it's not long, uh, but Walter Hagen was the first golf professional at Oakland Hills. And, you know, I, I grew up in Saginaw. I, you know, my parents didn't have a lot of money. I had a, I had a nice childhood, but... Uh, you know, dreaming about coming to Oakland Hills and being the head pro, I, that was never on my radar. And now that it's here, especially for the, our 100th anniversary of Oakland Hills, our centennial year, uh, the PGA of America's 100th uh, anniversary, their centennial year, uh, I've been a member of the PGA for 30 years, and the U.S. Amateur in August, there's a lot of things going on this year. So uh, for my first year at Oakland Hills, I got a lot on my plate, but I have a great staff. Uh, Dave Drisco is coming back. He's he's A plus. He's been a PGA member for a long time. Christy Wright's going to be our merchandiser. Uh, Chris Thompson will probably move into my spot and do a lot of the teaching, and uh, and then we have other support staff. But uh, Pat Croswell has been very supportive of me for a long time, and uh, I can't thank him enough. Well, now starting out with the one of the the greatest championships in all of golf, 
and with guys coming from all over all over the world to qualify and, and to get into the United States Amateur, this sounds like a real busy uh, season for you to start right out. Yep, it's uh, you know it's the U.S. Amateurs. Uh, that's where it all started. U.S. Amateur, then they had U.S. Opens, then it was the pros against the Amateurs for a while, and uh, but we've been preparing for the U.S. Amateur for probably four or five years now. The club has, and part of the reason, or the big reason, we have major championships at Oakland Hills is, you know, the course speaks for itself. Beautiful South Course, the Monster. We have the North Course, which is just as good as any any course in the country now. Uh, but it's the membership, membership, the volunteer committees. We have about a thousand volunteers. Uh, Lee Jewett's our general chairman this year, and it's, you know, it's a process to to get all this together. But we've been at it about four years now, getting ready for this tournament. Looks like it's going to be a great event. Uh, a lot of exposure, especially here at the Michigan Golf Show, and um, you know we're we're excited about. It. Steve Cook's our superintendent. He's been there the same number of years I've been there, 19 years. And if the course wasn't in great shape year after year after year, Oakland Hills wouldn't be known as you know Oakland Hills. So you have a great superintendent. You got a first tee manager, Bob Byerline Scooby, who does a fantastic job. A great membership, quality golf course, old clubhouse, which is beautiful. It's it's being restored a little bit right now, and uh, and a good membership. I'm just a small part of the puzzle, but uh, you know I get to give interviews every once in a while, so so it's well, nice. Well, it is uh, the first Open that I I covered was 1961, a uh, year after uh, a year after Hogan just missed winning uh, out at uh, Cherry Hills. So uh, it's, uh, it was a great, uh, a great experience uh, way back then, and Oakland Hills has, has just uh, done nothing, uh, nothing but get uh, better since, and it's world renowned. And I think that the club is looking forward to this uh, championship, sh uh, showing that another Open should be at Oakland Hills. Yeah. You know, it's it, it's funny. Oakland Hills has always been known as hosting major championships. U.S. Opens, Ryder Cups, 2004 is a big deal. Uh, Padre Harrington, 2008, the PGA Championship, most recently. But uh, you know, the club loves having major championships. We probably don't like having them every year, but it's uh, the history of the club, uh, the heritage, the legacy, uh, uh, everything that Oakland Hills stands for is is really a nice thing. It's not just a bunch of rich people having a good time. They're extremely generous in what they do. Uh, they're really, very uh, philanthropic to the community, but they don't tell any, anybody about it. So they're, they're giving back to the community in ways that nobody knows about, and they don't want to have people know about it. They do it under the radar, and it's, uh, that's part of the reason that the USGA likes to come back, the PGA likes to come back, and we'll see how it goes down the road. Well, if you uh, have seen the uh, uh, David Faraday interview with uh, Padre Harrington, uh, Harrington talks about the uh, winning at, o at Oakland Hills, and uh, our friend Terry Moore has uh, always talked. Yeah, but he was where he had those square grooves. You know, he was you know he he, he would never would have got out of the rough like that. And uh, and Faraday got him to talk about playing Oakland Hills and winning the actually at the 16th hole that uh, Sergio Garcia, I think, went in water. Yep. And then he made birdie on 17, came exactly. back, and, and Harrington won on 18. Anyway. It, yeah, you know, the, the square groove thing, that was yeah. big 20, yeah. 30 euros. Yeah. I forget when it was. But the funny thing was, before square grooves, there was an art to playing a fly or lie out of the rough. Yeah. You had to make a choice. It's either going to fly or it's not. So you planned your, your second shot or your approach shot or your layup or whatever it was. Uh, because of that. That was before square grooves. Then when square grooves came along, then it was the opposite. The, the ball would stop a little bit quicker. Now you had to make a choice as to, is it going to stop fast? It probably won't fly, so it made the game a little bit less challenging, but still you had to make a choice and the pressure's on. You, no matter what the conditions, if you're a tournament player, there's always pressure. You're either going to hit it too far, too long, too far right, too far left. So. Whatever the USGA and the Royal Nature decide to do with the equipment, you still have to uh, adhere to those rules, follow those rules, and then learn how to compete that way, much like Adam Scott's doing with the long putter now. Long putter, or the long putter you can still use, you just can't anchor it. So he's learning how to use a shorter putter. And he's doing good. He's doing, <laughs> he's doing just fine. So 
I think great players, great tournament players, will be great players no matter what era, what generation, what rules they come up with, because they're going to find a way to compete and beat the other guy through hard work, desire, uh, and just and just guts. So, well, you know that the Harrington uh, in the interview with uh, Faraday, you said he he always went around with two sets of irons. <laughs> he had he had the square and and the and the uh, the uh, V, and he'd go and check the check the rough that whatever the course was, and then the, that's the clubs that he put in his bag. Yep. <laughs> it, 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 you know, it's funny you brought up David Faraday. Not to reminisce yeah. here, but while we're doing this, I might as well reminisce, right? So after I graduated from college in 81, I had a chance to go play overseas, South America and South Africa. Well, South America, I got to play Jerry Pate, Mark James, Johnny Miller, George Burns, not the comedian, but the, the, the tour player. Then we go to South Africa, and that's where a lot of the European guys came in the winter. South Africans, Nick Price, David Faraday, uh, Paul Way, Ronan Rafferty, a fellow by the name of Mark Rowe. These were all Ryder Cup players. And uh, David Faraday, uh, and again, it's been a while. I can't remember all the details. Uh, but he was the comedian on the tour bus from the hotel to the tournament every day. So all you want to do is sit next to David Faraday, go out and have dinner with David Faraday and have a good time. But oh yeah, he was, he was, he was a little bit, a little bit left to center, but uh, he was a great guy and a tremendous player. People think he's just some, you know, stand-up weird guy. He could play the game because he's a Ryder Cup player. They don't pick the, you know, they don't pick the idiots to become Ryder Cup players. So he won tournaments. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he won on the on the tour in the European Tour. Yep, and a lot of people forget that. Yeah. Like John Daly, he used to play with John Daly quite a bit. They just think he's a long hitter and he drinks beer all the time. Yeah. No, that guy has more talent than anybody. He won two major championships. You don't do that just by you know rolling off the couch and not doing anything. So, but um, now we're going to see these kind of guys playing out here at the, at Oakland Hills this summer. They'll be younger now, but if, within a few years after that, uh, they're going to be on the tour. All right.